Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. This is probably going to be kind of a short video for me, and it's something that I thought some of you guys might enjoy watching. I'm over here on the Flex CNC, and I'm running a test program right now for two inch tap hole sizes. I got a sample piece there that we're going to be machining on, and this is so that I can prove out my program that I need to put a proper tap size hole in some plates for two inch bolt size. So I've got some one inch by three inch flat bar right here. Here's gonna be our second test piece. This is the one that I just did and I made a couple of tweaks in, to, in my uh, program on Fusion 360. I needed to take my finishing end mill a little bit deeper through there. I forgot to give it a negative offset so it's got like a little tiny edge there on the bottom of it. So I brought my end mill further through there so it'll clean that up properly. And then I also made a change. So I've already done one of these uh, previously and I, and I didn't really like the way it was going. So what we're gonna do is come in here. First thing we're gonna do, we're gonna take a one inch drill bit. It's, uh, it's gonna be one of my uh, drill meister carbide tip drills. We're gonna pop three holes in there. And then we're gonna come in here with a 5 8 diameter roughing end mill, solid carbide. Rough it out, just using a spiral pattern to rough out the three holes. And that'll leave about 20 thousandths on the ID there to finish it. So once we do the roughing, it's gonna grab a three quarter inch, four flute carbide end mill. It'll come around here and make a couple little finishing passes to bring it to the final size. And I actually have that dead nuts on the tap size. So that should be 1.781. And I've already mic'd this with a telescope gauge and a mic, and I have it spot on now. Had to use a little bit of the wear compensation to get me there, and I finally got it on uh, this piece right there. Worked out pretty good. So the reason why I wanted to go to a roughing end mill is because the first one that we did, it's a lot of material that it's milling out of here. And it's building up a lot of chips on both sides and underneath there. And while this thing is operating, I have no way of clearing those chips other than the flood coolant that's splashing down there on it. So I said, let's go to a roughing end mill and rough out the center because it's gonna make all these real tiny chips like that. All right, and they're not gonna pile up in bird's nest like a, a standard four fluid end mill will. So it worked really good for this. And I made my couple of little minor tweaks and I had one more piece of this that I could use up. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, do one more and I thought I'd grab the camera and share this with you. And uh, later on, we'll, uh, we'll head to the home shop and I'll show you the two inch tap that we're gonna be using to uh, tap these holes right there. I love using that flex arm and that two inch tap. It's so much fun. I know I'm gonna have a lot of people suggest that you should just thread mill that. And I, and I agree, thread milling is a great valuable option. My problem is I haven't done it yet. I've got to learn how to thread mill. I need to buy some cutters so that I can machine and do some thread milling. I don't want to do it yet. I have a work piece that I need to get to and I don't want to learn right now. I want to learn on my own, my own terms. So I'll take some more of the stock later and just make some test pieces. I'll get a couple of cutters so that we can test it on a couple different size bolt patterns or a hole size, I mean, and we'll, we'll get to some thread milling. I'm just not quite there yet, but since I have a big flex arm and I have a two inch tap, that's what we're gonna be using to make uh, the threaded holes here. The work pieces I have coming in, there's gonna be two of them and I have eight holes total that's gotta be drilled and tapped in, in one work piece. And we have a separate one that we're gonna be bolting onto the table over here that has a bunch of uh, five eighths holes drilled and tapped. There's gonna be 16 per plate. So I got 32 of them to do. But I'm gonna set the camera up. Hopefully we can get a little video without too much cooling in interruption. And you can see um, the machining of these three holes right here. Okay, I think we're ready to roll here. So coolant's always an issue doing these, uh, doing these videos inside the flex. I'm probably gonna just stop it in between uh, each, each tool, clear the lens off and continue going. So the first tool we're gonna start with, this is that one inch Tungaloy drill. It's the Tungmeister with uh, through coolant and it works beautifully. I absolutely love using these drills and highly recommend them if you have some drilling ops where you're looking for a good carbide tip drill. These are awesome. So let me get this program going and we'll go ahead and hit cycle start.
And you see we blasted through that block of steel there in about 20 seconds it took to drill those three one inch holes. So let me get the, uh, the lens cleared off and we'll go ahead and continue on. All right, so this is a 5 8 diameter uh, fine pitch roughing end mill. It's a helical brand. We, we are using the through tool coolant here with our Heimer shrink fit tool. And we're just, we're just bringing it out to our tap size, minus 20 thou for a cleanup. This roughing end mill is working a lot better than the four flute that I was using. Just a lot less noise, less chatter. Getting a little bit of squeak in there, but it's not bad at all. So now our hole's roughed out. That took approximately a little over two minutes to do those three holes. I'm gonna jump back over here to manual so I can open up the door and we will get the camera cleaned off and then we'll continue on. All right, this is our three quarter inch four fluid in mill. This is a Walter mill. Also using uh, through tool coolant with our Heimer shrink fit holder. It's gonna make a couple cleanup passes here. Now this, you can see the uh, the chips longer and stringier. And when I use that to rough the hole out, it, it just absolutely piled up in there into like a, uh, a hay nest. I was able to get the uh, tool wear compensation adjusted and I have got this uh, bore size. The last time I measured, I was a half a thousandth off of my target. I call that good for such a large hole, tap hole size anyway. One thing to keep in mind when I actually do the work piece, not the test piece, the work piece is gonna be inch and a quarter thick. We're, we're machining one inch thick right now. All right, so that's the end of that. I'm gonna go back to manual, we'll get your camera clean. And then our last stop is gonna be the chamfer. So this is gonna be a half inch diameter chamfer mill, 90 degree chamfer mill. I have the coolant disabled for this so you guys can see it. Works pretty slick. This is a 2D contour program that we're running on this. And I think we've got, I don't know, three or four passes around it. To, it's quite a bit of material that you're removing to make this chamfer. Look how slick that is. Such a sweet way to put chamfers on parts. Imagine having to do that in the manual mill. I've done it many times. You have to have big, giant countersinking tools to, uh, to do that, unless you uh, use something like a rotary table or a, a spacer.
case you're wondering about that chamfer mill, that is the YG brand. I picked up a few of those in different sizes and they work really well. There you have it. Go ahead and get you moved down so we can take a little closer look at this guy. That's some pretty looking holes there. Nice looking bore, got a nice smooth feel to it. Chamfers look good, but you can see what I'm talking about with the haystacks in here that you get. And whenever I was roughing it out with that cutter, it was just so much of those chips here on the vise that it was just cutting chips not working well. So I really like the performance of that roughing mill that we use, the roughing style end mill to rough that center hole. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my mic and we'll go ahead and snap a measurement on this and make sure we're still on size. All right, we got our mic and telescope gauge. Let's give these guys another check. 1.781 is my target diameter. That'll be your official tap size for a two inch UNC bolt, and we are there. 1.781, we got a couple of tenths there to add up. That feels good. 781 and five tenths. So 1.781, five is what our diameter is. I'll go ahead and check another hole here just to be sure. It should be consistent anyway. Seven eighty one and three tenths on that hole right there. So, like I said, we got a we got we got a really good size hole right there. So, we actually have a program that I know is going to be good. All I got to do is just make sure that my program that I'm building for the actual workpiece that we're going to be doing, I have all the same specs on there that I use to uh, machine this part right here. So, that that is good. We'll go ahead and uh, run up to the other shop and use the flex arm and do some power tapping on these test pieces right here so you can see what that's going to look like.
<laughs> there we go. That's awesome.